again. Uh, thanks for coming in and joining me today in the studio. I want to share a little bit about the painting process that's been really fun and meaningful for me recently. Um, I tend to take breaks of really processing things and then reevaluating them as I approach painting again, maybe after a break of like a day or something. And, and then slowly build and it just reminds me of how important it is to nourish the soil that we're coming from um, as far as educating ourselves about what's going on in our community in the world right now um, and feeding ourselves spiritually and what we need um, for self-care and our loved ones making sure everyone's okay so this all takes some uh, it's great work as it is and um, I hope you're all doing very well right now and uh, finding joy in the little things that are still yours to experience and so um, one thing that has been fun is uh, I made a little painting last night and I thought it was so funny how I spent so much time picking out the surface to work on um, Basically, I started looking for a large mat board, um, which I happen to have um, a lovely supply of. Um, and so I found that piece, and then I said, well, it'd be great to see some paper on top of this. Um, kind of like using the mat as a traditional mat and having a paper artwork pasted on top. And so um, I found the paper and measured it to size um, using my uh, T-square with a long plastic edge. You can tear the paper alongside this T-square and it makes what's called a deckle edge. Shout out to my friend Deckle. Um, and so then took a little glue and pasted it with on the corners onto this mat board. And then, well, I'll just show you. Okay, so you've got the mat board, you've got the paper, and then what is this? Well, the green here is, um, there was this tube of paint that was dry, uh, pretty much didn't have any paint left in it. Okay, so I added a little water and shook it around so it was like this um, lime green soup inside this container, and then um, I squirted it onto the page finally okay so after the backer paper on top finding out what color i was gonna do um i knew i wanted to make some marks um so basically i'm trying to move away from acrylic paints because i don't love having plastic around i don't like the plastic bottles or the paint made of plastic it's gonna fly so anyways um i don't want to throw them away prematurely I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, but I uh, just add water. Okay, so this has been part of the painting process since high school. I mean, always adding in water to the very last little bit of pigment is out of there. Um, so, shook it around, and then within a matter of two, three seconds, the squirt had happened around. Okay, so um, what was I thinking? When making that, I, I kind of wanted to make some kind of an arrangement, a grouping of marks. That's enough for me. And then there happened to be this really awesome bubble that landed here. And it uh, stayed there for maybe five minutes. I had taken pictures and videos about it. It was like a little biodome. It looked like number three there. Uh, so it popped now and it left all these great little tiny lines going around the circle which is something that I probably could not have painted by hand then it's just all these great like lava lamp type forms you also have like the areas of really thick paint some still has yet to dry <laughs> so uh yeah, so I made this last night, squirted it on, still not dry totally, which is, I'm really surprised. But I guess if you have enough water on there, 
So basically, that short interaction of making a mark has led to so much variety. Um, and you have pools of paint as different, you know, as water may settle on the earth and pool in some in more places than others, and some parts don't have any paint at all. And I just find that really great as a simple reminder of how things can be distributed on a plane and sit with that and in sort of meditation. So the variety of thick to thin and shape, uh, it kind of feels good to my brain, just the whole network of it. My brain is a network, the air, the water, us, our hearts, we're all networks. And so when I paint something like this, there's so much preparation that goes into a, just a sudden t second, second of action. and. Um, the way that it works, I think, is like all that preparation and all the, the nutrients and the education we put into it and the connections we make and invest within our community and ourselves and our history and the future. And um, so the more we're investing in it, the more we're going to get out of it. And when we, when the instant comes, when it's time to act, we'll be ready. So that's the way I feel about painting is that there's a lot of preparation that goes into making something. And then when it comes time to make it, it's very quick and in the moment. So I think preparing for those times when we have an opportunity to act, um, makes it really work well when it is time and you know where you're coming from and you're able to I like to connect with painters who have come before so I just bring up in my mind oh you know there's something in me that um, has a similar experience to someone who's created paintings in the past and what was their experience like and how does that relate to my experience and I think of Arshal Gorky, who's one of my favorite artists. Um, he was uh, late 1800s, early 1900s, came to America from Armenia. Um, he was a refugee and had brothers and sisters and dear to his mother, who he lost along the way, um, made it to America and became a modern art guru. He would self-taught and uh, go to the museums and copy Cezanne works, Van Gogh. Um, and anyway, so he's my role model in a way. He came to America, changed his name, much as my ancestors changed their name coming to America from Ireland. And so I think it's a really interesting story of how you can become whoever you want to be uh, in the world. So thanks for listening. Um, something Arshal Gorky used to say, I read in one of his books, was um, he was painting in between the blades of grass. He would sit for long days out in the field in the summertime, I believe, um, somewhere along the East Coast, they had a summer home. So he'd go out there, sit in the field during the day and paint, and what he was looking for was the space in between the blades of grass. So I just always loved that. He was painting what was in between the blades of grass. So that just makes me uh, really excited and come alive because it makes me believe that there's more than what we can see, that there are things in between the things we see, and I think that's really important uh, to remember um, as part of life. So celebrating nature. I have my setup here. And uh, I was going to do a little painting with you today and just show you because I think this is a great exercise to do um, for yourself and um, it doesn't take much. I like to keep things super simple because it makes it easier for me to get there uh, because 
sometimes we can be very particular about the way things are, so I like to keep it simple and appreciate the subtleties within a form. Um, so I've got my little container. I think I found it at a yard sale. Secondhand, reused, always best. So black ink in here. Um, that's all it takes for me. If I've got this little cup with ink in it, I feel like I am ready to go. I've got a variety of brushes here. I've got a cart that this is on. I just have a piece a board going up on top of a cart. It gives me my palette. Um, you can use any kind of table though. And brushes. So variety is great. I like to have one of these big mop brushes. It's like $13. So if you're liking painting and we're like a mop bot brush. These are really fun. Sometimes I hold it on the very top and I just swirl it over paintings with a little ink on it and you can get some really neat marks with that. Thin flat head brushes, thick flat head brushes. We've got round head brushes. Um, Another round head that's more thick bristled. So we've got some with soft bristles, some with hard bristles, and it's just fun to have the option. And there are no rules, just whatever makes you come alive. That's why I'm sharing this with you. Um, I think taking time to do things like create uh, very helpful. Um, there are times when we're listening and taking in and coming back to nature and asking nature for advice. Uh, how do I, how do I take this? How do I process this? And how do I make it into a flower? Um, and so I think the creative process helps to work some of that out and express some of that. Um, so, um, again, Connecting with the paper, bringing in gratitude for its presence, and I'm starting out with a little, a small brush today, and part of this is meditation, I mean, being quiet and, and listening. Sometimes I think I wish I wouldn't have done that, and it just makes me think like I need to listen better, and not just... Everything's important in life, so... I have a little bit of water here as well. So can mix. Wet paper, dry paper. Slowing down and putting attention to detail is one of the joys of this practice. Appreciating the way one line is darker than the next, it's different, so we can see. and how the shapes can fit together. No matter what I'm drawing, they're always going to fit in, on the page. 
Paige isn't gonna say no. You're not. You're not gonna sit there. Line. Uh, it's gonna stay.